Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Preacher Boys podcast. My name is Eric Skorzynski. I'm, of course, your host. And right off the bat, let me just say, please excuse my voice. I'm recording this on April 13th. And since April 9th, last Friday, I have been sick as a dog. And I feel like a, a bunch of just random body parts held together by a little bit of scotch tape. And so I don't feel great right now. But I wanted to share a couple things because the IFB has actually been up in the headlines quite a bit. In the last few days, I want to share two prominent stories as well as an update about someone that we've covered on the show in the past. First up, I want to talk about a story. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen really quick. First up, there is a former pastor. His name is Roger Van Raden, and he was sentenced to prison. He was arrested back in 2019 after his victim came forward and uh, he admitted to sexually assaulting a teen over a period of years. It's a really tragic story. He basically molested this girl from the age of 14 till the time she was 18 years old. She was driven to the point of suicide because of the sexual abuse. And he ended up being sentenced to 15 years in prison. He has to serve just over 12 years. And the state attorney uh, had pushed for a maximum sentence of 23 years in prison. The limit was reached in a plea deal. And his defense attorney had asked for a minimum of eight years. This story really blew up when I originally shared it. There was just a, a lot of people that were really shocked by uh, what had happened and just shocked by how light the sentence was. Uh, I wanted to read actually from this article. Uh, this is from the News Gazette. I'll link to this in the show notes of the episode, but it's just a absolutely tragic story. Uh, it says, Roger Van Raden, 49 of rural Rantoul, will have to serve just over 12 years of the sentence imposed by Judge Roger Weber. Uh, the number was right in the middle of what Assistant State Attorney Troy Lazar and Defense Attorney Evan Bruno of Urbana sought for Van Raden. The sentence came after three hours of uncomfortable, detailed, depressing testimony from the now 20-year-old victim, her parents, the pastor of Faith Baptist Church where Van Raden worked, the detective who investigated, and a pastor from another church who, canceled Van, who has canceled Van Raden since his arrest in late 2019 just to skip here a little bit so you can see, uh, Van Raden pleaded guilty in February to two counts of criminal sexual assault. Many committed different sex acts with the girl in 2016 and 2018. Two other sex-related counts were dismissed, and Lazar agreed to seek no more than 23 years in prison for Van Raden, which he did. The maximum he could have served was 30 years. He sought the minimum of eight years. He was arrested in 2019, not long after his victim came forward with information about the abuse. He was hired in 2014 as a music director and youth pastor, and he was in charge of programs for youth ages 13 to 18. It says the girl's mother found drawings of her daughter depicting uh, different ways to kill herself. And when she and her husband confronted the daughter, she told them that she was, quote, just going through rough times and that she couldn't talk about it right now. We've struggled to, with the fact that we didn't see this. We could have helped our daughter. We had no clue. She said through tears. Uh, Champaign County Sheriff's investigator Dwayne Relfs said on the day the young woman reported the allegations of abuse. He also talked to Van Raden, who immediately confessed having a four-year relationship that included different sex acts that occurred mostly in his church office. He admitted sending her emails and texts with sexually suggested messages and photos and videos of himself engaged in sex acts and that he had her do the same for him. Rolf said Van Raden estimated 25 times he had the girl perform oral sex on him, but when it was her turn to testify, the young woman said it was definitely more than 25. Under questioning by Lazar, she described the first time Van Raden rubbed her sides and explained how his advances became more brazen and frequent and developed into full-blown acts of molestation and rape. During the first year, after every time he did something, he would text me after, I'm sorry, but it's both of our faults. We need to work on this together, she recounted adding that she was too scared to tell anyone. And it says the only gifts he ever gave her were sex toys he wanted her to use in his presence, not flowers, cards, or jewelry. She was 15 or 16 when she began cutting her wrists every week. That was the pain I deserved because Roger told me it was my fault, she said. At 17, I almost did kill myself. I felt use, used and worthless, even though I didn't want to believe I was just a toy friend to play with, she said, adding he never said she loved her or never said he loved her. This whole story is absolutely disgusting. And what's most shocking to me was the end of the article, which says, besides letter of support for Van Raden, which why those letters of support exist in the first place, Bruno, who is the defense attorney, had Albert Bennett, a pastor of Rantoul Church that Van Raden was, had been attending since his arrest, testify about his counseling with Van Raden. 
Again, I'm unsure whether he's a qualified counselor, but it's still shocking what he said next. It says he recognized, uh, and this is a direct quote, it says that he recognizes he had sinned against the Lord and the victim in her family, Bennett said of the charge. There was complete and utter brokenness. I believe he feels genuine remorse. Again, this is just an absolutely shocking statement. One, there's no scientific evidence to show that predators do in fact change. In fact, every expert I've talked to says the exact opposite. And this is a deeply irresponsible statement for someone to be making. I doubt that he's actually a legitimate uh, certified counselor. I could be completely wrong on that. I asked someone who is close to him to let me know, and they refused to answer the question and said it was a stupid question. And so anyway, I just think it's shocking that there's some support being given to someone who manipulated a girl to the point of suicide for four years. And so that that story was one of the headlines that popped up with Van Raden. He has been sentenced to 15 years for molestation. We also had another case that popped up with Cameron Giovanelli hit our podcast when I interviewed Sarah Jackson, who was obviously a survivor of abuse at the hands of Giovanelli. A post on April 11th, 2021 by the official Harvest Baptist Church Instagram and Facebook pages showed sex offender Cameron Giovanelli singing in choir surrounded by young women for their quote, spiritual warfare conference. And uh, Harvest Baptist Church posted the photos. Keep in mind, Giovanelli pled guilty to a fourth degree sex offense and second degree assault, which are both misdemeanors. And the prosecutors dropped the other charges, including sexual abuse of a minor, which is a felony. And those were dropped as a result of a plea deal. But the church posted these images and blocked any comments, deleted any comments that were made uh, addressing him being there and uh, actually ended up taking down the post and then reposting the exact same thing while, while removing the image of Giovanelli. A post that was posted today, Tuesday, April 13th, showed that they had another guest speaker at the conference, Doug Fisher, who pastors where Mike Zachary is currently the pianist. Mike Zachary, who was accused of molesting uh, young boys by multiple people. And Giovanelli is also visible in one of the images there, but they're continuing to block people. They blocked my page, they blocked my personal account, and they've deleted multiple comments, including a comment I posted, which shared Sarah Jackson's uh, story. And the last thing I wanted to share. Uh, was a headline. This is the third uh, way that the IFB has really popped up in a big way is a podcast episode that we did recently with Angela Snow. It was featured in CBC, which is a national news, it's basically the national news for Canada. It made headlines. She had reported sexual abuse that she'd experienced when she was nine to the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, who told her that too much time had passed uh, between when she had this happen and when she reported it. I was shocked to discover Canada does not have a statute of limitations, so they were wrong in telling her that. And it looks like a lot of attention is being brought to how these cases are dealt with within Canada itself and how the police there are dealing with it. But it was really cool. The show and the episode got a lot of attention. It featured the podcast and the goal of the show. I talked a little bit about dealing with United States guests and the statute of limitations issues, but they did a lot of really good work. Mackenzie Scott, who was the reporter, did a lot talking about people who've been told by the RCMP that their report came too long after the abuse happened, which if you're in Canada and you're watching this is just not the case. That's not how um, this works in Canada. It should receive a thorough investigation and uh, really thorough, serious investigation done by the RCMP. So those are just three ways that the IFB has hit headlines or at least gone viral on social media in the last a little bit. It's really shocking uh, that these cases are still happening as frequently as they are, but that's one of the reasons this show exists is to continue to bring these stories to you. And once again, I really appreciate everyone who has been supporting the show. Without you guys, without those of you that share your stories, it, it just, these stories would not get the traction that they get and they need to. People need to be aware of these kind of cases and what is happening. But uh, that's all for now. Again, I apologize for my voice. I'm trying to get over being sick, but I'm hoping to be back to normal really soon. I have some incredible episodes coming out to you right away and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode of the Preacher Boys podcast. Uh, take care and have a good rest of your week.